What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I am very very excited to be bringing you a video of the brand new uh, Rick Hinderer full track. This is the full size version of well it, it is a, actually a, a different knife but uh, uh, Rick Hinderer's half track design uh, let's just call this the big brother. Um, <clears throat> this is a really big knife. Um, Quick specs here, uh, the knife comes in at 8.75 inches overall uh, with a weight of 6.9 ounces. So this is definitely a large knife. We're gonna do a couple of size comparisons here real quick. Uh, here it is against the Ontario Rat Model 1. If we get it actually butt to butt, you can see there it actually is quite a bit bigger than the Rat 1. Let's do it against the Spyderco Shaman. You can see their Spyderco Shaman coming in at eight and a quarter inches overall. Uh, Manix 2. Manix 2 coming in at eight inches overall. And probably one of the more important size comparisons is going to be the Rick Hinder XM18, three and a half inch. So you can see there, it is quite a bit bigger than the three and a half inch. Let me put it down here just because we're at an angle. So this knife comes in at an interesting uh, size because it is right in between the overall length of the XM18 and the XM24. The XM18 uh, being eight and a quarter, the XM24 being nine and a quarter. Uh, this thing at 8.75 inches, it's right in between there. Um, you do have a blade stock thickness that is the same as the uh, Hinderer XM18, if I can get them lined up here and focused. Let's try and focus. Uh, this is a 0.165 stock on both of these knives. You can see the robustness of the full track is carried all the way down to the tip. Um, so this is a, an excellent uh, durable blade shape. We also have CPM 20 CV steel in a very beautiful um, sort of reflective uh, light stone wash. It looks really nice. Um, that uh, that stone washing has continued down to the frame, uh, the pocket clip, etc. Um, now uh, this uh, this blade shape is a uh, draw point or spear point. I imagine they will come out with more blade shapes in the future. At the time of this video, the only thing that's available um, is the OD green in the drop point or spear point or black and drop point or spear point. I believe these are still available at the time of this video at DLT trading. I grabbed this one from uh, USA made blade and this is actually not my knife. This was um, generously uh, offered up for review on the channel by my, my friend David. So thank you again, David. Uh, that was really cool. Um, I, I was really, really excited about this guy. Um, so let's go over a couple more things here. Um, these are inlays. I mean, the entire thing is technically a, it's a full titanium setup with inlays. Um, in this case, this is a, uh, an OD green G10 inlay that is set into the titanium very nicely. Uh, no ugly gaps or anything like that. Really, really nice. Same thing on the other side. Um, you've got, uh, the traditional hinder style pocket clip. Um, and as far as modular hardware th goes, um, I believe that's it because we've got a brand new pivot. Um, these are way bigger screws than what you would normally see on the XM18. You can see here um, the uh, the uh, uh, hardware on this uh, full track is just massive compared to the XM18, and this is totally different. Also, look at the female side of the pivot here. For those of you um, you know who were, were upset about the uh, hardware setup on the XM18, uh, the, you know the requirement for a, a spanner bit or something like that. Um, you can see here um, that this is no longer the case on the full track. It's it's um, um, got a, a hex head. Well, the way that this is set up is it's not going to be able to, to free spin. Um, and then it's a simple Torx head on top um, or on the uh, show side that will allow you to take this knife apart. Um, speaking of taking the knife apart, the, uh, the big thing here with this knife is the tool that is also the backspacer. Um, this tool will actually allow... Uh, disassembly of the knife and if we can see here um, this top it here this um, this piece let me see if I can it's gonna be hard to zoom in here the top of this piece is shaped in a way that allows it to fit inside both the pivot 
and the handle screws here. Excuse the noise, I've got my front door open. As you can see there, it's designed to take the knife completely apart, which is really, really cool. Um, I will do a separate video on disassembly here, um, but I wanna show how this tool fits into the handle. Essentially, there's a spring back here. You push this over the top of the standoff, push down, and then that little hook catches the second standoff and it clips back in there. Really, really cool. <laughs> that is awesome. I love how it doubles as a, um, a sort of a floating backspacer there. Th that was really, really a cool design by Rick Hinder. You can see there how hard that thing kicks when it flips. This flipping action is, of course, the new Gen 6 Triway uh, pivot, uh, or, or it is being... Uh, um, pushed by that uh, that system. So the same flipping action that I was talking about on the new XM18s that's just so amazing, um, that is exemplified um, in uh, the new half track because the weight and length of the blade um, and the size of that flipper tab, um, take a look at that. Some people are gonna love that and some people are gonna hate it. As far as comfortability, oh yeah, he nailed it. Um, that's just a bigger version of the um, half track flipping tab or flipper tab. And uh, that definitely allows you to get a nice, powerful deployment. You can see that how hard my arm is shaking um, on recoil there. So that is definitely, um, definitely hitting hard. Now, um, as far as the blade, uh, the action coming back down, it is on bearings right now. Um, and I can tell you that it will break in, but it's a little bit stiff at the moment. Uh, of course, it came with perfect centering, rock solid lockup. You can see there there is a steel lock bar insert hovering at about 35%. Um, so that's great. I mean, it, what you'd expect from from Rick Hinderer. There's there's definitely um, nothing there that is is not to be expected. Another thing I want to point out is, you know, of course, this groove up here that is also on the uh, the Hinderer um, half track um, allows for you know essentially just a, a means of deployment that's not quite as aggressive as the flip. Um, the flip is is not going to. You know, this isn't necessarily a knife that you're going to be carrying in every EDC situation. I mean, let's be honest, this is a huge knife. It's meant for really uh, hard use scenarios. And I would imagine, you know, first responder type scenarios. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, if, if you do want to open the knife in, in a solar manner, then you, you have that option with that fuller there. Um, so that's really, really cool. You can see there on the flipper tab, there is, of course, the uh, triway symbol, which is going to be on all of his... Uh, it should be on everything going forward and you can also see there on the blade USA 20 CV right now these knives apparently are going to be offered in three steels um, it's going to be S35 VN 20 CV and M390 I think M390 is exclusive through DLT M390 is the same thing as 20 CV for those of you who who don't know um, but uh, you know you know wh whichever you choose those those options are available to you um, this knife is really interesting to me because he, you know, he took everything that was great about the the smaller um, uh, half track, and I think I think this plan was in the works for a while. I remember hearing something or reading something that he had, you know, actually designed the full track to be bigger and thicker than it even is shown right here. Um, but uh, he he took everything in the in the half track that was great and, and just made it larger. Um, and this design is actually, I think, a culmination of everything that's great about some of his other knives, including the um, the Eclipse and the XM18, and just sort of, um, I don't know, brought up to par with um, with modern demands. Uh, and you know, he uh, changed sort of the the ergonomics and the positions where your your fingers would naturally fall. And by the way, the ergonomics on this thing are excellent. This area right here. Um, this ramp and this this flat stop, uh, part up here with the with the uh, jimping. I mean, as far as like where my thumb wants to go naturally and that forward choil position, and this is this is excellent, absolutely excellent. Um, back here, despite all of this, it's so busy back here with the hardware. You'd think that there there would be a, a lot of opportunities for hot spots, but no, everything is very uh, chamfered and and. Um, very comfortable on my hand. Uh, the pocket clip does not create a situation where it's a hot spot. In fact, this feels really, really good in hand. Very, very comfortable. Um, for such a large knife and one that appears to be so angular, um, it, it is surprisingly comfortable. Um, really, really awesome design. Uh, for those of you curious, curious about its cutting performance, let me grab a piece of paper here real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a regular piece of paper here. Now, all I'm going to do is just Cut a piece of paper, but just to show you, um, you know what it's what it's like to slice with this thing. You can see there, pass number one, pass number two, 
pass number three. Let's see if we can get some waves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this thing's going to slice just fine. The edge is very sharp, no resistance there. Um, the blade geometry feels really, really good. Uh, I've got no issues with that whatsoever. Now, it's not going to be, I I'm sure, you know, if you take your the sliciest knife that you're aware of, you know, there's always going to be knives that, that probably slice better um, than, than anything else. You know, there's always going to be a better slicer out there. But in terms of how well this knife's this knife performs you just cutting paper um considering how big the blade is and how thick it is uh yeah that's that's very impressive so that's pretty cool i think that's a very very functional blade shape uh and that's awesome um let's talk about the price on this uh these guys are 595 dollars now hinder fans um you're, you're gonna know that that's the price of an xm24 and also i think most hinder fans are gonna understand why this costs what it does if you have never purchased a knife over $100, then you are probably not going to think that that's fair. Um, and it's just, it, that's, it's one of those things where you kind of have to graduate into something like this to, to sort of, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to approach this the wrong way, but to kind of grasp mentally what it is that you're paying for when you get closer and closer to that mark. And not, not everybody arrives there. Not everybody is, is ever going to need a $600 knife. And that's fine for me as a hinderer fan. Yep, I totally understand it. Um, you know, I've I've paid four hundred twenty five dollars for XM eighteens, uh, sixteen or seventeen times now, and and I'm I'm okay with that. Considering what comes with this knife, which by the way, it's not just the tool and all the pivot hardware. I can show you here. You know, the box is exactly the same as you know what's been coming with XM eighteens. You get the peanuts, the card, the bag, uh, and then you get the hardware for the. Um, the triway pivot system. So it comes with the nylon washers, the steel rings for the bearings or to take the bearings out and, and put them in the pockets where they would be. And then of course, phosphor bronze. Um, so you get that triway uh, hardware setup. You get this brand new design, this, this, uh, new, uh, hardware. Um, you've got, the, you've got the fitted tool. I mean, this honestly, truthfully, this, this does, it feels like a $600 knife. Uh, this is an amazing, an amazing tool. I love this. And uh, it appears that Rick Hinder has addressed pretty much everything that anybody complains about. People didn't like um, that his knives were, you know, not flipping correctly for how much money that they paid for them. Well, there's the action. People didn't like that he was using nylon washers. Well, now you've, of course, got the option with all your different washers. People didn't like that the uh, the pivot setup required a proprietary, proprietary tool. Well, that's not the case anymore. In fact, he gives you the tool. It comes right on the knife. Um, some people were upset that uh, the knives were in 20 CV, or I'm sorry, in S35 VN. Um, now you're getting, in, you know, in most people's uh, eyes, some of the most premium blade steels that are in existence. Um, in, in some people's eyes, you know, fit and finish was an issue. I can tell you right now, the last seven uh, hinders that I've purchased have all been perfect. And um, this one is no exception. Uh, this is amazing. Um, also, you know, the, the lockup situation, you know, some people, you know, didn't like how their lock bars were reacting over time. Now, some people don't like that lock bar insert, but I can tell you um, that's going to that's gonna serve more people, you know, than it is going to burden them. Uh, in, in terms of just overall, you know, lockup over time. And also, if you ever, you know, need warranty work done, it's a lot easier for Rick Hinder to simply, simply replace that chip and replace the entire lock side. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, this is a beautiful and stunning knife. And I think it is one of the most functional knives you can get in that price range. Um, <clears throat> speaking of, let's talk about the stop pin because that is going to be... Yeah, let's see if we can get in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch this on camera, but it is internal. And just like, you can see that bar in there towards the front up here. Just like on the half track, you're going to have those locking lugs. They're just going to be garaged inside the frame. That is really hard to capture, but you can see it in there. Um, so you still have, just like on the XM18, you still have this awesome bracing setup where you can uh, a lot of the force you know while you're cutting if you're twisting or causing torque um is it's not all going straight into the pivot uh, the frame is going to take some of that um so that is really really excellent i'm a big fan of that so in conclusion here um i think rick hinder knocked it out of the park with this knife now i am biased i'm a huge hinderer fan and i knew that i was going to get my hands on this uh, the moment that i saw it again thank you to david for uh, helping me do that 
Um, but, uh, um, you know, if you are a Rick Hinderer fan uh, and you have the means to acquire this, I, I say absolutely. Um, this is amazing. This is this is literally the coolest thing that, that Hinderer has re- released so far. Um, and you have, you know, all this accessibility, you know, on the fly accessibility, you can change all of the parts out in any situation, you know, you need to tweak something, you need to change out your, your pivot uh, setup so that it can adapt to whatever environment you're using it in, you're ready to go. It's right there. I mean, this, this is the ultimate large outdoor user tool. This is amazing. Uh, I love it. For those of you who have never purchased a, a hinderer knife before, um, I would suggest sort of, you know, kind of tiptoeing in the way that everybody else does. Start with the XM18 3 inch or 3.5 inch. Decide whether or not they're for you. Uh, and then if you want to, graduate on up. Paying $600 or $595 for your first hinderer, that's a big step. Um, so, you know, this, I've always said it, it's, it's easier to graduate into it. That's not really giving a lot of definition as to what I'm trying to say, but um, ease into it. Um, Hinder fans, like you know, who already own Hinders, yeah, go ahead. You're gonna love this thing. This this is an awesome knife. And you know what? You know, what? if you if if you want this to be your first Hinderer, then go ahead. Um, this is an amazing knife. It's gonna set an amazing example for you in terms of what to expect uh, in this price range. So that's awesome. Now, of course, you are we're gonna see in the future probably mod- modular stuff. I I can't wait to see um, you know different uh, scale materials, um, anodized hardware. I mean, uh, anodized frames. Uh, different blade shapes. We're going to see all of that. And this, oh boy, this thing is a right platform for that. We're going to see some awesome stuff. I literally just about chopped my finger off there. I don't know if you guys caught that. Um, Beautiful, aesthetically pleasing knife. Um, Heavy, but functional. Um, It it feels powerful, feels um, very capable in hand. You can see I've got a medium, large size hand. This is just awesome. I am so impressed with this. Um, Hats off to Mr. Hinderer. Um, this is the coolest thing that he has released so far. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then subscribe to my channel because there is definitely more coming. Also, stay tuned because I will do a full disassembly video of this knife using the tool. Thanks for watching and have a great day.